Hey everybody, welcome back to Why Not RV. On this week's episode, I'm gonna go ahead and show you why I'm ditching my Battleborn batteries for some DIY lithium cells. Let's get to it. Remember, if you wanna learn more and make less mistakes while RVing, be sure to hit that subscribe button Drop a like and a comment down below. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Let's go ahead and pop inside the Airstream just to show you my current Battleborn setup and how there's three of them right now. And I'm gonna be putting four of my sets of cells in the same exact footprint. You know, showing the footprint of a Battleborn battery directly right next to uh, my cells. You can clearly see that one cell fits right inside. But let's go inside. I'm gonna show you like actual usable, tangible space and how that's really all that matters. So my setup is currently uh, inside my little hall closet and you can see back here, there are three Battleborn batteries. One, two, three, sorry, it's a little dark back there, but there's three batteries in this space. Um, they could probably have fit a fourth one right here, they just didn't, but let's just look at my tangible space, my actual workspace I have to work with. So I'm going to use this exact same space because this right here is dead space to me anyways. I'm going to fill this all the way in with my cells and not only am I tripling the capacity from one, but now I'm putting four of them down. So that means I'm going from 300 amp hours to now 1200 amp hours, quadrupling my overall capacity of my current system. I'm taking what I have right here and in the same exact footprint, filling it in times four, four times the amount of amp hours in the same footprint. Let's get to work. First things first, let me just talk about why I'm making this upgrade, okay? So this Airstream came with three Battleborn 100 amp hour cells uh, or batteries, and uh, they're perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with them. However, I am a energy hog. I like, I have a, I have a very high usage of energy. So I'm going to go ahead and change those out for some DIY cells because one DIY battery takes up the same footprint of one Battleborn battery, but it is triple capacity. Okay, so it's three times the amount of, of usable battery in the exact same footprint. Let me show you what that looks like. So just as a visual representation, this is your standard Battleborn 100 amp hour battery, okay? This is my four cells, which equal a 12 volt battery, same exact as this, only this is 304 amp hours, this is 100 amp hours. I have three times the capacity, that's three times, triple, that's three of these, three of them are in the exact same footprint. You can see that, you know, of course, I don't have the BMS hooked up yet, you know, but you can put that to the side or above it. You know, there's a few different ways here. Um, but again, right now, this, if I line this up on the edge here, you see that it's a little bit longer, right? So again, here's your room for your BMS. So when I say overall footprint, I mean, that is pretty darn close. I mean, I can even put this one up on top to show you that it is the same footprint. I mean, it fits right on top of that, okay? You can see there. The width, it's almost identical. Um, and again, triple capacity, three times the capacity, triple, one, two, three, three of these, it's insane. Here's another great uh, representation, okay? This is the Battleborn Game Changer, which is a 270 amp hour 12 volt battery, okay? Now this thing is ginormous, okay? Here's one cell sitting on top of it. Just so you can see that the overall width of the cell is pretty much the same width of the footprint. Now here's four cells that I have stacked up next to it, okay, which you can still see that I can easily stack a fifth one right here. Now, if I did two of these packs, these 304 amp hour packs, side by side, that's still let, like, you know, here's just for visual representation. That's, that's the footprint of 608 amp hours and this is 270. Now, yes, of course, this is much more efficient in terms of the footprint by comparison of the 100 amp hour version. That's because I put bigger cells in here, but it's still, I mean, this is more than double the capacity right here. If you were to put two batteries in essentially less footprint, you're doubling your capacity from the game changer. So again, even if you're buying the game changer, thinking that you're making, uh, you know, you're, you're doing better, bang for your buck, blah, blah, blah. You're not, okay? These cells, there's no way around it. These cells 
are the best bang for your buck. And they're so easy to put together. So, so easy. So clearly with the footprint being so similar from one battery to the next, um, doing these DIY batteries, not only does it save a ton of space for when it, in regards to amp hours per battery, but I mean, just look at uh, the price difference, right? I mean, I I'm gonna go ahead and put some numbers up here for you of what the price differences are. But you know, these cells, uh, I can't remember specifically, but they cost me around like 650 or $750 range for a 300 and uh, 304 amp hour battery. So that's triple the amount of space when, and it's cheaper than Battleborn. I think Battleborns are selling for like $900 range. So, you know, $150, $200 less than that, and you're tripling your capacity for the same footprint. Why wouldn't you DIY a battery? It's so simple to do. Let's show you the process of how to build your battery. So these are the uh, Eel Battery Eve cells. They're 304 amp hours and they're 640 bucks on the EEL website, which I'll put a link in the description below to where you can buy these directly from EEL, which is what I did. Now, uh, I bought one of those sets uh, originally right from uh, a US distributor and I got them relatively quick. I think it was like less than a week. And then the other three sets I actually had to order, um, again, still through the website and everything like that, but it, they actually came from China. It took some time to get to me. Uh, I wanna say it took about 40 days. So just a little bit over a month, which isn't that bad. And here I am uh, currently August of 2023 that kind of thing is gonna change. Now, so for 640 bucks for 304 amp hours of battery, that's insane. That comes with the bus bars, comes with the screws. All you need to do then is buy a BMS. The BMS that I used, um, which again, a, a link in the description below to where you can buy this on Amazon, is the daily BMS, uh, four series, 12 volt, and it is a uh, 100 amp BMS. Now, depending on your specific setup and needs, you might need a different BMS. The reason I went with the 100 amp BMS and that's 100 amp per battery, these are all in parallel. So that's 400 amps total of usable discharge. Okay, which is way more than I'll ever use out of this thing. I'll probably only use, you know, 200 at any given max peak, 250. At, I mean, that's a crazy, crazy, crazy number right there. Um, but if you only have say two of these cells because you only want two batteries, um, 608 amp hours and you're like, that's all I need. You're gonna need a bigger BMS, okay? Um, so make sure you, you do your research on the BMS that you need based on the load that you're gonna have. If you have any questions about that type of stuff, make sure to drop them in the comments below. I do really good about responding to the comments. Building the battery is actually quite, quite simple, okay? But there is some prep work to it. So the first thing you wanna do when you get your battery, uh, when you get your cells, now if you're just building one battery and you just got four cells, you don't really need to do this, but if you're doing multiple batteries together and you're ordering multiple sets of cells, those sets of cells could be off from each other. So what you want to do is hook them all up in parallel. That's all the positives together and all of the negatives together. And you want to do what's called a top balance. Now you can just hook them all together with the bus bars and let them sit there for, you know, a month and they'll kind of balance each other out over that long period of time. Or you can spend 30, 40 bucks on Amazon and get uh, a battery charger that you can adjust the voltage and adjust the amperage to, and then apply what's called a top balance, okay? And a top balance is basically where you're bringing all these batteries up to their top, up to the peak capacity, um, all together. Because with lithium, it has such a straight curve, a charge curve. So, you know, these batteries could be at the same voltage, but the actual capacity of like percentage of state of charge where it's at could be off by 20, 30, 40, 50% easily, even at the exact same voltage, just because that lithium charge curve kind of goes shing and then drops off. Okay. That's like all the way down, like 5% it drops off. So it's a very, very, very slowly moving downward line. Um, all the way down to that uh, bottom state of charge. So that's why you want to do a top balance. But again, if you're only doing one battery with four cells and you get them from one supplier, they're probably going to come in all together at the same state of charge, same voltage. Uh, you don't necessarily need to do a top balance. I would still do it myself, but probably not necessary. So when it comes to doing a top balance on brand new cells, okay, we're building a new 12 volt battery. So I have four cells that are going to equal up into 12 volts. And right now I have these all in parallel, negative to negative to negative to negative, positive, 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 positive. All right, so I have a positive on one end and a negative over here, and these are all in parallel. And I'm gonna do a top balance this way. And what that means is I'm going to bring the state of charge on these four cells all the way up to max capacity. The way you do that is you have to get a separate charger that has adjustable voltage and current. 
These are pretty cheap. I'll put a link in the description below to where you can get one on Amazon. But we set it to 3.65 and we're gonna go ahead and connect our negative and our positive. And again, current is all the way up for maximum uh, amperage charging. And you're gonna let this go until this current drops all the way down. Okay, we'll show you at the end. Now, in my case, I'm building four batteries. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect all of these batteries all in parallel. So I'm gonna continue this exact same thing all the negatives together, all the positives together, all the way down. Um, and that's just because I'm doing multiple batteries. If you're doing just one battery, this is how it should look. So again, now in my case, because I have four 12 volt batteries here, which is 16 total cells, um, these are all in negative parallel and positive parallel all the way down, okay? Uh, got them all, all set. I have my little bus bar tips here at the end. So my alligator clips can clip on nice and easily. We'll go ahead and put our negative on and our positive on. Okay, and now we're at 3.65 volts. And again, my amperage is cranked up as high as it can go on this particular uh, charger. There's, there's other chargers that have different uh, amperages so they can charge faster. Um, this is really all you need. Um, it's uh, They're like 30, 40 bucks on Amazon. Um, and uh, they're just a great thing to have around the house. But anyways, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and let this sit here and top balance. All this is just gonna go, go, go until my current drops to you know virtually zero. It's gonna be really, really low. Um, so we'll come back and check back. Now, the first thing that I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, disconnect my old batteries, okay? And what I'm doing is I'm turning off everything inside the RV so there's no load. All the fans are off, all the lights are off, the inverter's off, everything is off. And fortunately, my uh, Airstream here has a disconnect, so I'm actually able to push that disconnect and ensure there's essentially no DC load occurring. I'm also gonna turn off my MPPT solar charge controller. That way there's no current going through the batteries, okay? Then I'm gonna disconnect my batteries. I'm gonna take one of my battle worn batteries, I'm gonna set it to the side, I'm gonna take a set of jumper cables, okay? And I'm gonna use these jumper cables only to run my refrigerator, okay? My refrigerator is DC driven. Uh, I just wanna keep it running while I am uh, doing everything just because this could take a few hours. I don't want the fridge to go bad. So again, I'm just using these jumper cables to go from the battery to the leads only for the purpose of running my fridge. Now, uh, this probably isn't necessary for everybody. Some people might have a electric fridge and you can just run an extension cord from you know your neighbor's uh, RV or from your house, whatever the case is. But uh, that's that's just what I'm doing. So again, here is my current battery layout. As you can see, there's room for potentially a fourth uh, Battleborn battery. I'm not sure uh, exactly if that would fit right in there, but um, you know, there's only the three and I'm gonna use the same footprint, only going all the way up to the edge here uh, and fit in all of my cells right in the same exact spot. So you'll see the after here in just a few. But uh, like I said, let's go ahead and get this disconnected and um, move one of these batteries, set it aside so I can run my refrigerator. So you can see I have everything completely off the inverter is off, I have zero watts to AC load. The solar is turned off. There's only a five watt draw occurring within the coach, which could just be uh, yeah, obviously like a little little brain for something, right? Such as the, you know, Airstream's little system monitor or something like that. But either way, so now I'm gonna go ahead and come over to my battery disconnect. I'm gonna go ahead and put it into store. That disconnects that end. And now it's time to actually disconnect the batteries. All right, so I went ahead and just disconnected my little positive lead that I have here for the BMV 712. And now I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect our negative. Now, just like that, removing this negative, there's no power going to the rest of the RV. Obviously I've already disconnected everything, but we're good to go. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the positive, start to remove all these cables and get these batteries out of here. So 
So that only took me about 10 minutes to go ahead and disconnect all those batteries. Now you can see I have my main positive, I have my solar positive hanging out there. I got my main negative just hanging out down here. But I'm gonna clean this area up a bit, right? Because whoever did this install before, I mean, this <laughs> fuse block is just sitting there loose. I had secured that down, but it wasn't secure when I first bought it. This wasn't secure when I first bought it. I'm gonna relocate it a little bit. But uh, what I am gonna do is, like I said, I'm gonna use my jumper cables and I'm gonna go ahead and connect my uh, uh, negative over here and my positive, I'll probably actually just connect it right down there in the uh, inverter just because it's a good easy spot to grab onto. But I'm gonna go ahead and connect those to one battery so I can get my fridge running again. So you can see, I just got my little positive and negative there and I got it ran up and into here and just on the uh, mains of the multiplus. Now again, the multiplus is off. It's not putting any power. I'm just using this. This has like a little bus system right now just to distribute power. Um, but again, the only thing I turned on is my fridge uh, just to keep it running while I get all this work done. But now I got all the space cleared out. I'm gonna go and remove this wood and start to get my cells put in place here uh, after maybe cleaning some of this up. Now here's just a little preview shot of all 16 cells or four sets of batteries right we got. One, two, three, four sets of batteries. Four 304 amp hour batteries. That's over 1200 amp hours of batteries. Uh, like I said, in the same footprint. I actually moved that bar in a little bit. All right, so kind of the next step, I, you know, I'm working on getting some stuff cleaned up here, you know, mounted that up, mounted the main fuse block up, um, got a little wire tucked a little bit tighter back there. But basically what I did now was I connected my four battery cells, one, two, three, four, in um, what's called series connection, right? So we have a negative and a positive, then this positive connects to this negative, positive to negative, positive to negative, and then now I have a main positive. So now I have a main positive and a main negative on this set of four cells, which this gives me now a 12 volt battery. And I did the same thing with battery two, battery three, and battery four. So that is now, these are all connected. Um, I'm, next thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is get my BMS wiring started. That's why I only got one set of screws in. I've not tightened anything up yet, but we're gonna go ahead and get some wires ran. So to go ahead and prep our BMS leads, I'm going and using um, some of these um, on the tips, okay? So this is what the BMS leads come looking like. Okay, they're just plain. I went ahead and snipped back about a quarter to half inch or so and then have now attached on and snipped the ring portion so that it fits around the little screw at the top of the battery. So basically all I'm doing to achieve this, okay, in case you don't know, is I went ahead and stripped this back a little bit, okay? You can see I stripped it back a little bit extra. That'll focus. Not really doing a very good job focusing, but and I went ahead and just bent this in half just to give a little bit more wire inside of the end of the nut, uh, wire nut here. Okay, get it lined up, take my crimpers, and I go ahead and you can see I get it right on the edge, I'm trying to get a good angle for you, right on the very edge of it, right where the wire is just barely poking out, give it a nice good crimp, and then I take these and I snip the end and I pull through. That way it just kind of opens up that ring a little bit so that I can actually get around the bolts of these batteries, um, which they're pretty small, but again, every battery is different, but that's all I'm doing for these. So just to show you, for example, okay, I'm still gonna try and clean this up a little bit, but you have your black wire here, which goes to the negative. Okay, that main negative on the very first cell. Then the next four red wires, one, two, three, four, okay, go in order. So this very, very first red wire that's right here next to the black wire goes right to that positive of this first cell. Then the second red wire goes to the second positive of the second cell, third red wire to the third positive of the third cell, and the fourth positive to the fourth uh, cell positive. So that wiring that I just showed you goes ahead and plugs into the bottom of the BMS. Now your, your BMS, um, again, I have a link in the description below to where you can buy the one I'm using. Uh, these are not the smart version, just because I had the smart version before, and yeah, it is nice to look at the cells and stuff like that. And if you want that, great. I just wasn't willing to pay the extra amount for it this time around. But anyways, you got your 
B minus, okay, goes to that main negative. And now this now becomes, it's called P minus, that becomes your main negative. Okay, so I have my main negative. I got my main positive. This is now a 12 volt battery. I just measured the voltage, it's at 13.23. And that is how you set up your DIY battery. That's it, it's ready to go. Now, uh, I have the wood kind of down there, um, keeping this nice and tight. I am gonna add a second layer of something up here at the top just to keep these all nice and tight and prevent them from uh, expanding too much. Okay, so let me kind of tell you what I got going on here. Of course, every RV and every situation is different. That's why I'm not gonna show you exactly what I did because every single RV is uh, its own thing. But essentially what I got going on here is I have my negative uh, cables, okay? One, two, three, oh, and four. And they all go into my negative bus bar out of the negative bus bar, I have one single cable that feeds my BMV 712. Off that, I have my solar charge controller, the inverter, and the main for uh, the DC system. Now, I basically did a similar thing with the positive. Okay, all the positive cables, one, two, three, and four, all go down into the bus bar that I have here, which then off that bus bar is the uh, main for the DC system, which both feeds the uh, inverter, but then also right off the inverter is the positive for the rest of the system, as well as the uh, solar charge controller, and then just a little cable that feeds the BMV 712. But that's really it. Right now I have these BMSs uh, up on top there. I'm probably just gonna stay there because uh, there's a shelf that goes right here. It's gonna sit right above these, and these are pretty much not gonna move at all, and they're gonna be pretty well secure. But again, every situation is a little bit different. So whatever works for you, um, you know, I went ahead and mounted my MPPT charger up on the wall because number one, now heat can escape through the top versus before it was on the ground. And as you know, heat rises and it doesn't really have much cooling, you know, left to right uh, horizontally. So anyway, so I got that charging, or I got that uh, mounted better. Uh, redid the cable on that, redid some other cables, and uh, overall pretty happy with it. And now again, I have 12 100 amp hours worth of batteries. All right, so last little thing here, like I said, I added uh, another piece of wood up here along with some foam board um, here in the front and on the side. So that, that is nice and secure and tight. These cells aren't going anywhere. And I did a capacity test. Wanted to show you guys that today I pulled down 1163, 1163.2. I'm still at 12.2 two nine volts so i still have you know like there's 1218 amp hours and i've pulled down to 1163 already and i can keep going and i am going to keep going but uh, i just wanted to show you guys this for now so to summarize this project uh, and again building your own diy lithium battery pack it's really very simple you have four cells that you put in series which means you go from one cell's positive to the next cell's negative and then that next cell you go from it's positive to negative and positive to negative four of them in a row, you then have a 12 volt battery, okay? Uh, and then again, you just put a BMS system on it, um, which again, link in the description below to those BMSs that I'm using. And that's really it, call it a day. That's, keep it simple, right? There's a lot of other videos that have a lot more in-depth stuff. Do some more research on them. Some people talk about compressing the cells, keeping them tight, all these different things. There's a lot to it, but at the end of the day, that's all you need to get started. If you have any questions, make sure to drop them in the comments below. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching Why Not RV. Bye.